In this next story, we take a look to Kristaps Porzingis, the Dallas Maverick having the worst offseason in recent memory for sure. I mean, KP hasn't even had a chance to step onto the court yet for Dallas, and yet here they are once again having to field questions and investigate things uh, due to another incident. And, you know, the the incident before with the woman that he was accused of sexually assaulting or, as some reports say, raping, that, that all occurred before the trade. And supposedly Dallas didn't know the extent of anything or even that that part of it was even the case. Here we have another crazy story going on. I think this came back from the 9th, but it wasn't until yesterday on the 12th when it began really circulating on social media. And it involves this picture behind me, which is a screenshot from a video taken outside of a Latvia nightclub. That's KP's home, uh, home country here. And it sounds like basically due to some socio-political tension that KP effectively got jumped by a group of Russian men. So even though KP is seven foot three, I mean he's a little bit of a beanstalk, yeah, but it's uh, it got ugly quickly. Now this dates back to, and I'm gonna probably butcher this for people who are from that region of the world and know much better than I do. But as far as I understand it. This dates back to tension between the countries around the time of World War II, uh, between effectively Germany and Russia, and Latvia kind of caught in the middle of that. And basically it sounds like, in this case, this is like the day that this occurred is around a time in which basically the Russian people there are kind of like celebrating like, I think the word is like liberating maybe, uh, Latvia. And I think there's tension there because of that, because... If you now, if you translate what KP is saying to these guys around the time that this picture is taken, he is very directly drawing attention to the fact that they are, I believe the phrase he used was Russian bastards, and uh, that he would hand them their ass and send them back to Russia himself. Now, there's all kinds of news coming out of this. It sounds like, according to what we've heard thus far, that KP was jumped by these men. We don't know any real details of what led up to the attack. But as you can see in the picture, KP is bloodied above his brow. Uh, his shirt is torn. His hand, I believe it's his right hand, which you can't quite see in the picture there, is also, as he put it when he was reaching out to the Mavericks to talk about this story, basically effed is the phrase that I'm sure he probably said fucked, but all the same. His hand is messed up, although no structural damage, he claims. So that's a bullet dodge there for the Mavericks. But what you look at here is, as I said earlier, KP needs a quiet offseason, man. Between recovering from his knee injury, which is a devastating knee injury for a player of his size, the report that followed him from New York with the sexual assault investigation and all of that, which has been completely quiet now for some time, now you have this incident, which even if even if he was just jumped by the men, it clearly got physical and it went both ways. It's not like he just got blindsided and took it, and I'm not saying he should have by any means. But the concern here, if you're looking at KP, if you're Dallas, right, you're, you're acquiring a potential superstar, a guy who looks ready-made to be a superstar alongside Luka Doncic, and with his age and his ability, just the fact that, again, he is a unicorn in this league, in this really the sport you you can't pass on a guy like that i get it and with superstars or potential superstars you're going to be willing to take on more potential headaches than you would for normal guys if this is ryan brokoff he's not still on the roster just to be clear but kp man there's there's some kind of concern for me because yeah he's 23 years old but it seems like he's got maybe a little bit of an immature streak to him uh, in this video, it sounds like he was, I mean, not. I don't know about the video itself, uh, but the incident itself makes it sound like he was certainly very drunk as this was all going down. I don't know who instigated what, or if maybe he just responded to a group running their mouth about something, and that's what caused things to break down the way they did. Regardless, dude, you, you got to be a little bit more self-aware than this if you're KP. Like, really. Coming off the offseason, you're already having, like, just your stint with the Mavericks, your employer, 
you cannot be getting involved in these kind of incidents. And there has to be a time when you know when to walk away and when will to let something go. Like there's there's nothing to gain, even if you make a comment towards these gentlemen, assuming again off the the pretext that they were kind of talking shit and talking about this whole socio political issue, as I mentioned before. Even if that's the case, you're not gaining anything by engaging them, whether verbally and certainly not physically. So there's nothing to gain and plenty to lose in this case. Again, if he hurts his hand, that's really, really bad for the Mavericks. And the Mavericks are now doing their own investigation into this right now. They have said that their findings seem to indicate that he was jumped. They're still going to have to sort this out. And it's being investigated there. Their club is still doing its own investigation and trying to collect information. And it's concerning. And, and part of the video that's not shown here, the brunette woman next to KP there to his his right, uh, the part that is being talked about more, I think, here right now in Dallas is the shove itself. Now, she's part of KP's group from everything we can tell in the video. And she's initially standing when the video starts running in front of Chris Stops. And he's, you know, of course, he's a giant compared to her. So he's looking over her head and he's still shouting to somebody. I don't know if the three guys or however many guys it was, I don't know if they're still there, like off camera or if it's a police officer or what. But the, the woman seems fairly intent on trying to calm the situation down and stay between KP and these whoever he's talking to. And KP gives a pretty forceful shove. Like, it, as, as I recall watching the video, and I saw it yesterday when it first came out. I haven't rewatched it. I probably should have admittedly rewatched it uh, before jumping on the air here. But he gives, as I recall, a pretty forceful two handed push. And if she had gone down, if she had fallen uh, on her, you know, fallen and hit her head or something like that, like, this would have blown up a lot bigger because. Domestic violence in American sports has become a huge incident. Now, more so in the NFL than the NBA, I would say, right now. But it would still be a very widely discussed, controversial thing. And I don't know. It To me, it's not the bigger part of this discussion. To me, the topic is the the fight itself, right? The circumstances that led to the fight and then the fight itself and what kind of look this puts for KP out there because now right or wrong even though the first incident occurred before he was a member of the Dallas Mavericks you now have investigated for a sexual assault investigated for basically a fight in a nightclub uh, in his home country and in that incident he's jumped bloodied and his hand is as he put it effed although he does say no structural damage like it's a really bad look it's not good for the Mavericks. It's not ideal. And they're going to have to figure out something as far as... I, I don't know what that moment is. You know, I, I know some Nick fans and all that are trying to kind of go like, Ah, we won the trade. See, we were smart to get away from KP. First of all, the first incident happened while he was on your watch and you did nothing to do anything about it. So I don't know why you're touting victory for that. But this one, again... Yeah, there, there's a concern with maturity there for me at this point. And when I first kind of heard that theory thrown out there upon hearing about this incident, I was a little bit reluctant to kind of buy into it. But the more that I've read on the incident and obviously having seen the video, and you just have to think about how you put yourself in that situation anyway, There, there's something to be said there. Whether it's some degree of maturity or self-control lacking, I don't know. But... It's interesting to me that 20-year-old Luka Doncic, the only stuff you're hearing from him this offseason is him working with the Mavericks training team, uh, Casey Smith, him working on his jump shot, doing all kinds of things like that. He looks like he's doing Dirk shooting drills practically, shooting off one foot from the three-point line, not just jacking around like some kid at a practice you know, in high school or something like that, like before practice actually starts, but actually doing some kind of shooting drills like the uh, unconventional stuff you would see Dirk and Holger do throughout his career. So it's interesting that your 20-year-old looks like he's doing everything right and he's putting himself out there. I mean, you're not even hearing about Luca playing like Fortnite and all that, which was, you know, that was kind of the joked about thing all before his rookie year and early on in his rookie year was that was, you know, he played that like crazy and everything. And now... Now Luca's just out there looking like he's ready to work and like he's got the self-awareness and everything to be like, 
no, I understand. Dirk Dirk has retired. This is going to be my team now. This is my franchise, and I'm going to lead this thing. And his his Robin in this case, his wingman KP, is meanwhile out there kind of acting a fool. It sounds like, or at least putting himself in you know compromising positions. Again, it, 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 him pushing the woman. Even though she's in his group, even though she appears to be his friend, and as you see here, she stays with him. It's not like they were barking back and forth between them, and he pushed her, and she went, and, you know, went and talked to a cop or something about it to kind of say what he did to her. None, none of that appears to be the case. But even still, that that's a bit of a red flag because I guarantee you, the U.S. media probably will lock on that more than anything in this case. Because I doubt there's going to be any kind of criminal charges that stem from this. I think this is eventually just going to run cold. But it's still the perception that it puts out there. So I'm not willing to say that it's you know by any means a mistake acquiring KP. Especially in the situation we are and the opportunity we had. We were about ready to send Dennis Smith Jr. out the door for a pack of peanuts it sounds like. Uh, prior to getting KP. So if you have a, have a chance to add a player like Christophs Porzingis and to get something out of your high potential ceiling uh, rookie, not rookie, second-year player at that point, Dennis Smith Jr., your lottery pick from the year before, who you know had substantial value, you got to do it. You got to do that trade 99 times out of 100, if not 100 out of 100. So, I mean, what was another option you heard them talking about? Mo Bamba for DSJ straight up? Mo Bamba had a, a stress reaction in his leg. I don't even think he played barely at all last year, and he missed most of the season before it. Uh, not before it, but after the trade went down because of that stress reaction. So I, I view the whole thing as like, man, you you got to get KP here. I don't know if you can get him to move to Dallas or something like that, but you got to do something to kind of reel him in. And maybe that's just having Luca talk to him like, you know, hey, we we're leading this thing now. Like I know you look up to and admire Dirk and everything like that. We got to run this franchise now. We have to represent this franchise. We are now the two kind of cornerstones of this franchise, and it's up to us to carry that weight and that responsibility. I know I'm talking in a very old fart man kind of way, as opposed to the 20 year old Luca. Luca probably would f- phrase it a little differently. But that's basically the gist is like they've got to do this. And now, you know, you got one of them looking like he's doing everything you could ask of him and more. And you got the other guy who has not been able to quite stay out of the headlines yet. So uh, I hope KP's all right. I hope this thing goes away. And for his sake, I hope he can just get back on the basketball court because at least then people will kind of forget about this tumultuous offseason he's having. And we can get back to just playing basketball because that's really the only thing that I think will chase these stories away from memory.